Now in this video, we'll discuss about some uh, derived rules. So totally we have seen uh, 10 rules that are natural rules in the previous videos. So derived rules in computational logic, like we have four more extra rules that are called derived rules. So the first one is like these rules actually derived from the natural detection. Okay, first rule is a very important rule and that is called modus tonals. Modus tonals. Uh, this rule actually it is a uh, derivation based on an implication from the rule of implication. So here when you have P implies Q and negation Q is the given premises, then we can write it as negation P. So this rule is called modus tollens rule. So uh, like this is the first rule, like this can be proved like taking like the prima given premises are P implies Q is a premise, negation Q is a premise. So first one is negation uh, P implies Q and negation Q is in uh, the proof given premises. Now with this step, we are going to take an assumption. We want to prove it as negation P. Okay, so negation P, we cannot directly prove it. So what we do, we take the uh, negation of this contradiction of P as the conclusion as an assumption. So we take P as an assumption. And with that, we are going to prove this modus tollens rule. So now see, according to these two rules, we can write this as like P is given and P implies Q is given, like with implies elimination of one and three, we can write it as Q. And uh, now what we can say for this step is we start with an assumption. See here, uh, negation P is given, negation Q is given and Q is also given. So it is not possible to have a state a premise and its negation to be valid in the same state. So in that case, what we can say it is a false statement. We cannot have Q and negation Q to both to be valid. So that is not possible, right? So based on this negation elimination of step two and four, we can write it as false. So we started with the assumption and we have proven that to be false here. We started with the assumption P and proven that to be false. So with that, we can write it as negation P. So this assumption is wrong. So it means that by uh, contradiction, by uh, this negation insertion of uh, three to five, we started with the assumption of P and derived to this false, derived that to false. So we can write it that the assumption that we have taken as false. So it is negation insertion of P. Based on this three to five, we had we have written the statement. So this is called a modus tollens rule. So based on this implies insert elimination, negation elimination, negation insertion, like the natural rules, we have derived this rule. So that is why we call it as a derived rule. So this is the first rule in this derived rule. And the second rule is proof by contradiction method. Okay, so proof by contradiction is something like, uh, see initially, this is called proof by contradiction. So usually what rule we have, like we start with something and if that something derives to false, we can write it as negation P. So this is your negation insertion rule. Now I'm going to take the reverse of it. If we start with negation P, some false premises, and if that after certain steps, if that derives to false, we can write it as P. Okay, so this is your proof by contradiction. So these rules, instead of deriving all the steps, we can directly write it. Okay, so we can take this as a rule and we can directly substitute in your natural detection method. Like, you know, like when you want to prove some sequence, we can directly use these rules. Okay, so proof for, for this is first, the given statement is we start with negation P and it derives to false. So this can be written as P implies false. See, after certain steps, it derives false. So that can be written as implication. So this is your given premise. And now with this premise, what we are going to prove, we are going to prove it as P. And that is false. Like uh, see, for this, the sequence can be written as negation P implies false proves P. This is the sequence structure for the given proof by contradiction method. So I want to prove P. So I cannot directly prove it, prove that P. So what we do, we take the inverse as an assumption over here. So the inverse is 
negation p. So this I take it as an assumption and prove this to be false. And if it is false, I can insert one more negation for this. Okay. So now negation p, and here it is given as negation p implies false. So with these two statements, using this implies elimination of statement one and two, we can write it as false. So we start with the assumption and the, we have based on the given premises, we prove that to be false. So what does that mean? The taken assumption is false. So we have to write the negation of it. What is this negation? Negation P is the given statement and we have included negation. So negation insertion based on step two, two, three. And fifth step is based on this double negation elimination of four, we can write it as P. So double negation P can be equated as P. So it is derived. Okay, so this can be directly used as a rule for it. Okay, so now two rules done. And the next rule is double negation insertion. So double negation elimination comes under your natural rule. And to insert two negation, so double negation insertion can be done. So this is also, this is the type of derived rules. Okay, so this can be proven like, first here the given premises is P. P is the only given premises and we are here, we are going to prove it as double negation of P. So here, uh, what we do like from P, you want to derive it as ne double negation of P. So double negation of P, uh, assumption we can take it as negation P. Okay, so negation P, we can take it as an assumption. And uh, we know that P and negation P cannot be valid in the same statement. So by negation elimination of statement one and two, we can write it as false. So we started with the assumption and that assumption tends to false. So what does that mean? Using negation insertion of step two to three, we can write it as double negation of P. Okay, so this is your double negation insertion. This is one of the true derived rule. And the fourth important derived rule is called law of excluded middle portion. This is very important rule that needs to be proven. So this is called law of law of excluded middle portion. Okay, law of excluded middle. Okay, so this actually says that even without any of your premises, we can write the statement as P or negation P. Okay, so this is called law of excluded middle term. It, it can be written in the sequence form like this. There is no left hand side. In right hand side, we are going to prove it as P or negation P. So this is called law of excluded middle portion. So the proof for this law of excluded middle portion can be written as so first step, that is no given premises. So we have to start with assumption and then, then, then only you can prove it. So always as it is, like we can take the negation of the resultant portion as a premises. So negation of the conclusion is P or negation P. This I'm going to take it as an assumption. And with the single assumption, we cannot prove anything. So I'm going to start with one more assumption as P as an assumption here. Okay, so when P is valid what we can write when one statement is valid that can be art with any other statement so i'm going to write it as p or negation p using r insertion of step two i'm going to write this step okay so now what we say the given uh, the taken assumption is negation p or negation p this is valid if this is valid this is not possible so both these two statements cannot be valid. So with this, we can write it as it is false. So it is based on the rule negation elimination of statement one and three. Okay, so one and three. One statement is, as uh, uh, one is a proportional logic statement. Another is the negation of the proportional logic statement. Both cannot be valid at a given time. So with that, we can give a justification like this. So we started with the assumption and that assumption uh, forms to be failed. So we cannot use that. So we can write it as negation P. So this is negation insertion based on step two to four. Okay, so now negation P is given. If negation P is given, we can write the statement. Like we cannot conclude it directly over here. The reason is we have to prove that. Like we have two assumptions, only one assumption concludes over here. 
okay so when negation p is given we can write the statement as p or negation p so negation p is valid it can be combined with any other statement so this is based on r insertion of statement 5 and the seventh step is here if i have given it as p or negation p and the taken assumption is negation p or negation p so this is not possible so based on this negation elimination of statement 1 and 6 we can say that it is not possible so this is your this assumption is made to be false over here in this step we start with assumption 1 and that is proven to be false over here okay so with this we can write it as eighth step i write here so it, with this we can say that the given taken assumption is false so we can write it as negation of negation p or negation p so this is based on your negation insertion from step 1 to 7 and ninth step is by double negation elimination we can write the statement as p or negation p so this is the conclusion that is needed so even without any of your left hand side we came to some of the conclusion so this is called your law of excluded middle portion okay so this is very important rule that does need to be known thank you